Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Kia Sportage, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt Custom Fit Trailer Wiring Kit. But before we do that, let's take a minute, check it out and make sure it's gonna work for you. So for those of you that plan on pulling a trailer around, you're gonna need a way to get the uh, signals sent back to the trailer. That way the lights work and uh, you'll not only be safe, but it's a legal requirement as well. And that's where a kit like this is gonna come into play. It's gonna have the four-way flat type connector, which is super common, especially for the types of trailers that the Sportage is likely to be pulling around. Um, and you will get your basic functions. So you'll have your turn signals, your brake lights, and your tail lights. One of the nice things about this kit is you can keep the wiring outside next to your hitch, like we have it here today, or you can actually keep it stored on the inside of your vehicle. So the choice is entirely up to you. Um, what I did to secure it to our hitch here, just use a dust cover, and then I uh, had some wire loom that I put on there just to help it blend in. You can always get brackets too if you want to mount it up. So a no drill long bracket, you could bolt that to the hitch in a four-way flat bracket and, and uh, position this in a way where it could set something like that maybe. Um, for those of you that want to keep it on the inside of the vehicle, the way that would work is whenever you're not using it, it would simply just stay underneath your storage compartment here. And so if you don't really use the wiring all that often or don't want to see it on the outside, this is how you could do it. You leave it bundled up back here. When you're ready to use it, drape it over, avoid the latch, you'll close the hatch on it and uh, be able to plug into the trailer. And this kit comes with the four-way flat wiring is really long, so you're not going to have to worry about running short on length and not being able to reach your trailer. When it comes down to it, this is going to be a great solution for those of you looking to power up your trailer's lights. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad. Um, you know, you're primarily going to be working over here on the driver's side, uh, plug and play and everything. You will have to pop a couple grommets out uh, to run your wires down up into the tail light and out the bottom, and then a power cord from the back to the front. That's probably the most time consuming part, but uh, really isn't too bad. And if you take your time, it should be in pretty good shape. That said though, why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Kia. And over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have an underbody panel that we need to remove. It's gonna be two push pin style fasteners along the bottom edge. And with these, you can just take a flat head screwdriver, pry down on the head and pull the whole fastener out. You have two more fasteners kind of up here in this pocket. And sometimes there's a plastic nut on them that you can spin usually by hand. I don't know if ours is just set up different or they're missing, but we have these pieces. So I'm just going to take a pair of pliers, kind of pinch the sides down, and we can get this removed from our vehicle. With that panel out of the way, that'll allow us to get access to this grommet here, and we're going to remove it. I just got a pair of pliers, we'll pop it out. We're going to have this factory connector here, and eventually we'll plug our harness into it. For the time being though, we'll just unplug it. You push down on the center of this tab and pull the two ends apart. You'll have a big bundle of power wire that comes included with the kit. What you wanna do is just take one end of it and push it up through that opening, maybe just a couple foot of it, uh, enough to at least keep it in place inside of the vehicle there. You can move up top now and open up your rear hatch. And what we'll do is remove any of the floor coverings that we have inside. We're gonna have this threshold piece that runs across the center of our vehicle. And on each end of it, we're gonna have a fastener we can remove. And so it's just a plastic Phillips head screw. And with these, just very lightly 
start to unthread it. And you can pop it out like that. And if it comes out of the base of the fastener, not a big deal. Take a flathead screwdriver, pry that out. So I'll do the same thing to get the one on the other side of our threshold removed. We should be able to grab our threshold now and just work from one corner over and simply just pop this out of place. Over here on the driver's side, uh, we're gonna have a couple of screws that we can remove. So one will be right here. One will be down here. And this is just a, a Phillips head bit. We'll also have this cargo hook here. And if you remove the cover behind it, just, I'm just popping that out with a little pick there. That'll expose another Phillips head screw. And let's pull this whole thing out. Should be able to grab our panel now. <clears throat> Just start to kind of work it off of the vehicle there until we get to uh, about a position like this. You don't need to completely remove it. We just need a little room to work inside here. We are gonna need to remove our driver side tail light and you'll have this piece of plastic, this little cover along the edge. There'll be some indentions there. And you can just very carefully kind of pry behind those. That'll look, allow you to uh, remove that piece. And then if you grab the Phillips head screwdriver, and remove the screws holding it in place. We should be able to just kind of work our tail light around. So it slides back like that. And uh, what we'll do, we'll just disconnect it Push down in the center of this tab, separate the two ends, we can set our light off to the side. Where this here wiring harness comes into the tail light pocket, you see we got this grommet, and you can pull that out. And then I'm gonna very carefully take a pair of snips and just cut a slice in it, making sure that we don't accidentally damage our uh, factory harness there. We'll take our T connector now from our trailer wiring harness. So it'll look like this. You'll have a red, brown, white wire. And we'll come in from behind our panel. Feed it through that opening there. One end of it will plug into our factory wiring there. We'll snap those in. And it'll give us a little wire to, <clears throat> to work with here. We'll push our grommet back in place. I took a zip tie and just secured our new harness to the factory one. And we're going to take some silicone and just blob it up around there. That way everything, everything stays sealed up. We can now grab our tail light and the other end of our T-connector. We'll plug into the back of it. And we'll just reinstall this the opposite way that we removed it. Being careful not to pinch any wires or anything like that. On closer inspection of that grommet that we pulled out, uh, my thought was when we did it, we could feed the wire through and put it back in this way, but it looks like it's designed to go in from the bottom. And so I just took that power wire that we pushed up in here, pulled it back from underneath the vehicle. And uh, what I'm gonna do, 
push it through like this. I'm going to go underneath now. And just feed it back into position this way. We'll take the end of our power wire now and strip back the insulation a little bit. And this is how we're going to make all of our connections, whether it be a buck connector, ring terminal, twist that wire, and then you can take a buck connector, put it over the end of the bare wire, and crimp it down. And I've decided to upgrade to a heat shrink style connector. The ends seal up and just provide a little more protection against corrosion. The ones that come in the kit will work just fine, uh, especially back here since it's <clears throat> inside the vehicle anyway. But uh, if you use those, just tape them up real good once you completed the connections. Take the other end. We have the black wire coming out of our trailer wiring. Plug that in there. Get it crimped. And to seal the ends up, if you do decide to use these, Come back with a heat source and shrink them down. There's another grommet right here. It's pretty big and you can get to it without removing this box, but for video purposes, uh, I removed three 10 millimeter head nuts there. So we can kind of see what's going on because it's kind of tight in here. But with this grommet, we're gonna pop that out. And more or less do the same thing like we did on the uh, the tail light there. We'll just cut a slit in it. We'll take our other T connector in here from our trailer wiring. It has a green and yellow wire. We'll drop that down on through. And then put the wiring through the slit in the grommet that we made and push that back in place. Might be easier too just to push this all the way through and then when we come, uh, come back here, try to help if I turned it around the proper way. Push everything through and get this grommet reinstalled. As far as this four pole wiring, you got a couple of choices what you can do with it. You can leave it stored on the inside of the vehicle and then when you're ready to use it, drape it over the threshold like that, close a hatch on it. Or you can run this outside and mount it up next to the hitch. You talk to our neighbor, they want it outside. And so that grommet that we use to push our T-connector through, I'm gonna utilize that and do the same exact thing to get our four way flat uh, outside underneath of our vehicle. So what I've done is secured our box there, just using a couple zip ties. And I just zip tied it to this thick bundle of factory wiring. Then, uh, you know, you got quite a bit of extra wire. I just bundled that together to clean everything up. And now we have this white wire with this pre-attached ring terminal. That's gonna need to be grounded. So I'm just gonna utilize this stud here. Uh, this is that box that I took off. There's just uh, these 10 millimeter head nuts. You can remove one of them. Put the ring terminal over it. And we'll just tighten this back down here. Underneath of our vehicle now on the driver's side, this is where our wires came 
through the grommet, just zip tied everything up, put some sealer on that one there. And with this T connector, it'll plug into this electrical connector that we uh, disconnected when we started. So one end plugs right on in. Then the other one went over to the other side. Our four-way flat wiring, uh, I put some wire loom on it because it does kind of bend around some metal here and I think it just helps clean up the install look as well. But I just routed that over through this way, securing it to our hitch where I have it dropping down. And then I just use the dust cover to secure it to the safety chain opening there. For the power wire, that's gonna have to get routed up into the engine compartment. Uh, get hooked up to our battery. So I just have it running along through here on top of our subframe. When you're routing any wiring, always make sure to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. So there's where that wire comes. Um, and you know, I just use zip ties along the way to keep it secure. But more or less is just following some of our factory lines here. And we have this little panel there's a couple of, couple of 10 millimeter head screws you can pop out. I think a little easier to see. But that wire is going to run along through here. Up along through there. And through this opening, that's where it's going to go up into the engine compartment. If you're having a hard time getting it up through there, you can always use a pull wire. So a piece of tubing or you take a metal coat hanger and straighten it out, you can drop it down from the top, tape the power wire to it, and then go back up. You're able to pull the wire right into position. Underneath the hood, here's where our wiring comes up. And I cut the power wire to length and then crimped on the included fuse holder using a butt connector, just like we did at the back there. On the other end of it, I crimped on a ring terminal. You don't have to do this part, but it'll uh, make things easier to see. We're going to have this air intake duct and a couple of push pins holding this end in. We'll pry them out. And then we should be able to just slide that out, get it out of our way. And I did that to get better access to the positive battery post. You got that little cover there, and that's where this is going to get hooked up to it. So we'll take a 10 millimeter and remove this nut. take a ring terminal make sure the fuse isn't installed just yet either put that over the post there and then just tighten it up back down at this point we can take the included fuse and place that into the holder. And I'm gonna tape up our connection point here. And once I have that done, uh, before we go any further, putting stuff back together, we'll test our wiring to make sure that it works first. To test this, I like to use this uh, little tester here as opposed to just plugging into a trailer. And I say it because if your trailer has any issues, it might mislead you. I'm thinking it's something we did on the vehicle side, but with that in mind, we'll try our left turn. Our right turn, we'll hit our brakes and try out our running lights. Since we verified everything worked, I resecured all of our panels the opposite way that we removed them, and we're good to go. So, with that done, that will finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt custom fit wiring harness on our 2020 Kia Sportage.